welcome back to my channel it's been a while hasn't it it's been a hot minute this video is the very first time i've made a video with no makeup on i've got my little golden thing going on but that's it and i feel very free and very happy in my own skin at the moment so i'm sharing that with you a lot is happening in the world but if we can see the tumultuous times in our external as a reflection of the tumultuous times within us then we can all learn a lot and develop practices that make us at least feel like better people um, today I will be sharing with you the first part of a three-part vlogging series of my travels in Australia. So I thought about doing your classic vlog style thing and just talking over the video and like talking about my time there, but I thought it would be more fun to show you guys where I went but also do a reading on top of that and I found this book not too long ago which is this beautiful anthropological work that was published 33 years ago it's basically all about aboriginal culture spirituality and relation to earth to the sky to the ancestors to the electromagnetic nature of life and reality and it's just fascinating. I haven't read it all, but there's some really beautiful passages in here. My intention with this is literally just to create a relaxing experience. It's not a like grand display of my core beliefs. I just flipped through the book and read some words that moved me and thought that it would be an interesting rendering of artistic form. To have this simple video overlaid with a kind of dreamlike narrative linked to the consciousness of the first people of the land that I was visiting. So I hope that you enjoy it. Um, I hope that it's not too weird or too random because I will be doing it again. So just sit back, relax and enjoy the ride. All of existence passes through a succession of phases, each marked by a definite transition. Astronomers speak of the infancy, youth, maturity, and old age of stars and galaxies, acknowledging similarities with the stages of our own lives. For each of us, each life transition involves deep physical and psychological changes. The difference between one phase and another constitutes a new form or way of being. Cultures in which initiatic rituals are important view death as no different than other life transitions, except that in death, continuity is maintained not by the ever-changing physical body, but by the spirit. Death is the greatest transition rite of all, and each life transition is a symbolic pre-enactment of death. The primary function of society as the repository of collective knowledge is to assist each member through these archetypal phases. Initiation expresses society's intent to make each phase as distinct as that of a substance undergoing the change from solid to liquid or from liquid to gas. In initiatic societies, the name, appearance, social position and level of responsibility of each person at each major juncture, for them, no surface quality should be carried from one stage of life to the next. In Aboriginal culture, the continuity that underlies these discontinuous phases of life is the dream time. It provides enduring customs, kinship relationships, totemic ancestral identities, and sacred topology, all of which have existed since the beginning. Underlying the Aboriginal worldview is the belief that people only reach fruition by accepting the risk and adventure of continual death and rebirth. Space, in our conventional awareness, is basically felt as distance, the empty interval separating objects. Our notion of space depends on our notion of time, which is necessary to measure distance. Hence, most of the words we use to describe space such as short and long, 
are also used to describe time. Aborigines do not perceive space as distance. Space for them is consciousness, and like consciousness, space is divided into two modes. The perceptible, tangible entities in space are like the conscious mind, and the invisible space between things corresponds to the unconscious mind. The term unconscious is misleading. The unconscious mind is always conscious. It is a continuum of dreaming. In Western culture, the presence and activity of the unconscious is obvious only during sleep and dreams. For the Aborigines, the unconscious mind is continuous and ever-present, permeating all levels of existence, just as space invisibly fills everything from galaxies to the interior of the atom. The conscious mind is like the things of this world, appearing and disappearing, alternating between wakefulness and sleep, between life and death. The visible actuality of a form exists simultaneously with its invisible potential, just as the conscious perception exists simultaneously with the flow of the unconscious. Similarly, the potential of the seed and the actuality of the plant appear to follow one another in sequence as day follows night. From the perspective of the dreaming though, day and night exist simultaneously as the opposite sides of a spinning sphere. The Aborigines refer to the inseparable relationship between the actual and the potential, the conscious and the unconscious, as the light and dark faces of the moon, both are always present. In a similar manner, the genetic code might appear to be evolving in sequence from simple to complex, but the simple primary cells and patterns are present on the earth at the same time as the very complex forms, varieties and combinations. The apparent all-pervasiveness of the sequential pattern results from our evolution of and total resilience on the functions of the unconscious mind. Everything that has spatial existence results from a relationship between the dreaming and the perceivable world, between the conscious and the unconscious aspects of mind. To the Aborigines, the rainbow symbolizes the edge of the unconscious. It is the dreaming, where the invisible potentials begin to become visible. Birds who wing their way through empty space are the messengers of the unconscious, and flashes of lightning are violent discharges of energy from the depths of the unconscious. To define consciousness as a field of activity with the potential to create unlimited forms, comparisons, analogies and meanings is to approach the space perception of the dream time. All spatial relationships in the dream time are primarily symbolic, meaning and information are not transported across distances and time. They are an integral part of consciousness expressing itself as spatial order and arrangement. For this reason, if an Aboriginal child inadvertently kicks a stone or a twig, they are instructed by a tribal elder to replace it exactly as it was. To the Aborigines, the spatial landscape is a perfect symbolic description of the psychic content of humans and of the ancestral forces that created the world. To disturb the earth in any way is to obscure the meaning and history of humanity and reality. Knowledge is shared through resonance in space and time. Meaning, not space and time, connects all things. The logic of space is the logic of a dream. An Aboriginal woman recently interviewed on television said, with your vision, you see me sitting on a rock but I am sitting on the body of my ancestor. The earth, his body, my body are identical. The logic of dreams does not prevent our being from flowing into the being of other creatures so that we live in their form and in their awareness. In dreams, other creatures enter and inhabit us. Every character in a dream is fabricated from the stuff of consciousness. In dreams, subject and object interpenetrate. There is no external space separate from the internal. There are no objects or events, be they stars, spaceships, or molecules, separate from the feelings, desires, projections, activities, and images of consciousness. All children are born from the relationship between the conscious and unconscious. Once we have been deluded by imbalanced modes of perception or misconstructed language into believing that space 
is separate from consciousness, and time is other than the rhythmic swing between the subjective and the objective, then we have lost sight of the reality of creation. The phenomenal world is considered the dream of the ancestral beings. Neither the dream nor the phenomenal world is considered an illusion. Rather, together they constitute reality. Towards the end of his life, the visionary biologist Gregory Bateson intuited the existence of the dream time. Quote, the individual mind is imminent, but not only in the body. It is imminent also in pathways and messages outside the body. And there is a larger mind of which the individual mind is only a subsystem. This larger mind is comparable to God and perhaps is what some people mean by God, but it is still imminent in the total interconnected social systems and planetary ecology." End quote. At this juncture in human history, it is imperative that we recover a sense of the deep logic that underlies the Aboriginal language, rituals, and way of life. So that is it! That was the footage that I gathered from my trip to Sydney. I also ventured out to the Blue Mountains and to Uluru, which I will be making two separate videos on. Do let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this style of video. I had a lot of fun making it. It's actually been over a year since I've been meaning to edit and upload all of these little bits. So I'm very happy that it's out. It was really interesting for me to have this work that I did and then also discover this book and kind of mesh them together a little bit. And yeah. If it moves, inspires, or makes just one person happy, I've done my job. Breathing in with gratitude for this space and this time, and you guys, of course, thank you so much for just taking the time to watch this. I hope that it was a peaceful and lovely experience, and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care of yourself, be kind to yourself, hydrate yourself, there is a lot of love and blessings coming your 